What's going on, Game Dad fam? I'm Josh, the Game Dad, and this is more Pokemon Trading Card Game. Uh, when we last left off, Mitch got the best of me. But you know what? He ain't gonna get the best of me again. Getting cold feet? No, no, I... He thinks I'm a wimp. I have to prove him wrong. So, I have something I wanted to discuss that's kind of like... I don't know. Not really relevant to this, but... Uh, the Sonic movie. So, it came out, and everyone just... They hated, 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 hated the design of Sonic. I didn't mind it, personally speaking. But, yeah, and so I was like, I don't understand why everyone's hating on it so much. Like, it doesn't seem that bad to me. Like, I get it. Oh, the teeth. Oh, I don't... Uh, to me, I was like, eh, you know, it just... They're going for a more realistic aesthetic. I get it. The whole movie seems to cater that. I'm cool with it. But there was one point that was made by one YouTuber where I was like, huh. I didn't even think of it like that. And that is, uh, Jim Sterling, shout out, Jim, um, made the point that he made a video about the arrogance of Hollywood and kind of dovetailed it into uh, the the old school X-Men movie, like the first one, um, and how they went with all plain black leather and Hollywood's idea that they know how things need to look and a thing can't be successful if it doesn't look that way. And when it was put into that context, it was like, oh, okay, yeah. That makes a lot more sense. I get that. So, like, I got that part of the anger. So it's not... I'm not sitting here saying, like, I now hate the movie, I now hate the aesthetic. Like, I was already okay with it. I'm not changing my mind. But I feel like I better... I guess it's just that I better understand what got everyone mad. Because it's like they changed this thing that you knew you liked and they did not have to change it. And on that aspect, I can be like, okay, yeah, I that, that argument holds up. That's kind of frustrating. You know? So, I'll be honest, I should have switched to Doduo and just tanked out the hits until I could have... I don't know why I sacrificed Caterpie here. I did not have to do that. That was stupid. Because no duo wouldn't have taken any damage because of resistance. And I still would have achieved the same effect of keeping Jinx safe while I got energy up. I mean, you know, there's nothing I can do about it, but... Just a little foolish on my part. The real frustrating thing is, unless I draw either a defender or a potion... Jinx will not last. Or an energy removal. If I draw a defender, a potion, or an energy removal, Jinx can at least take out Machop. Otherwise, she can't even do that. But she can get him into death range. But the problem, though, is that then I'm... You know... I've got a Jinx in death range, and that's it. So, but, I mean, I got a, or excuse me, I got a Machop, rather, in Death Range, and that's it. But, at the plus side, I got Doduo slash Dodrio waiting in the wings. So, if I get one energy, uh, I can bump up to Dodrio, and then he's going to be pretty beefy. Uh, Machop literally can't hurt him. If three energy is on Hitmonchan, it can deal ten damage at a time. You know, he, he'll be able to tank out hits pretty well just because of that resistance. So, he works defensively well. You couldn't have come a turn earlier? Really? Cool. So, my chop's dead, and now I can grab another prize. Let me grab... Uh, this one. Okay. Yeah, and like I said, Hitmonchan can't damage him unless he has... 
three energy on him, so... There's... Okay. The only fear I have is if Hitmonlee gets going. Because Hitmonlee can tag for 20 at a time. And that's... That's a little, little worrisome. But I have potions, so I think, honestly, I'm just going to be running Dodrio through this. It's going to be slow going until he gets a couple of points of damage on him. But it'll get the job done. So it's going to take me like 20 turns of attacking, though. So, you know. Sorry about that in advance. I should have left it Doduo until I had some damage on me. But I mean, it's still gonna average out to 10 damage a turn, so. It doesn't, it's just the chance at seeing 20s that makes it any different. I'm gonna evolve these guys because. I might as well. Like, they're not going to be able to come in here and just smack me for 100 damage. And I have two potions. Like, uh, I'm not going to get caught off guard and obliterated before I can react. I'll put it on Metapod because only two energy gets Metapod going. Um, and keep going. I'm upset because I was hoping he would... The only real frustrating thing here is if he switches to... If he switches to Hitmonlee and stretch kicks my bench, I'm not actually going to be able to do much of anything to stop that other than potion up my dudes on the bench while pounding away at Hitmonlee. So I gotta hope he switches to Macho. I'll take a noticeable hit. But then from there I'm fine. That's good. Now I can bump him up to Haunter and then up to Gengar. And then I can start manipulating damage around the enemy team. To my liking. Haunter. I'm not going to gamble because I don't need to yet. See, he, does he have only one energy on him only? He has two. But he has three on Machoke. He might put out Machoke because Machoke can deal 20 to my face. But that would be kind of... That's my perfect scenario. If he puts out Machoke, Machoke will deal 20 damage to me. I will turn around and start dealing 30 damage with every rage attack. Damn it! Okay, now I gotta hope he puts an energy on it only. I don't want you to do that! Okay. So I got a Gengar up. And I'm going to leave the damage on Gengar for this turn. What would be best is, like I said, if he put another energy on and he could tag me for like 20 damage. Please, please. No! Okay. So I'll heal up Gengar. Gengar needs three to dark mind enemies. So I'm gonna heal up Gengar. And then... Psychic energy, and... Question is, do I gambler or do I oak? I'll oak guaranteed seven cards, and I don't really... The stuff that's in my hand was actually potentially detrimental at this point. Venusaur is a big deal. 
because I can move the grass energy from Dodrio onto Metapod and Stun Spore. And Scyther, also potentially good. He's resistant to fighting, right? Yeah. But I don't think I want to play him yet, just because of stretch kicking hip only. So I am going to energy trams, move an energy from Dodrio to Metapod because of Venusaur. Dodrio retreats for free. Grab Metapod. And Stun Spore will speed up the kill process to where, at the very least, Hitmonlee can't kill one of my dudes on the bench before I can do anything. Which is good. Now, he might high jump kick instead. I'm honestly okay with that. If Metapod has to be sacrificed, so be it. He's the weakest link here. So what I'll do is... Now I'll play Scyther. I'll play a Grass Energy on Venusaur. And I will Pokemon Power, Energy Trans, and I'll move the energy off of Metapod. Onto Venusaur. Because now... He'll die, and then I can put off Venusaur and start solar beaming. Just cannon, cannon, cannon. Now granted, when Macho comes out, he's gonna smack me for 50 or 60. But then I'm gonna hit him for a bunch of damage as well. So I pretty much have this. Let me just check something. Macho's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. He's got 80 HP. Submission deals 20 to himself. Yeah. So if he submissions, or if he uses Karate Chop and then I weaken him and he goes to use submission, he'll knock himself out anyways. And now I have Scyther, enough energy to get Scyther ready to go. I've got Dodrio ready to go. This fight's over. It's all over but the crying now. And it hurts to use that term, because my boy Nick Wright from First Things First, at Get Nick Wright, he used that term in reference to my Celtics falling short of glory. It, that's sad. It's big sad, man. Big sad. But it's okay. It's okay. I'll be fine. So he's going to karate chop me. And what he's going to try to do, I'll tell you right now exactly how it's going to play out. Uh, I will put a Grass Energy on Scyther, so I can double colorless him next turn. Uh... I got plus power. I'm, I'm doing fine. I'm gonna Solar Beam him. Karate Chop now can't do damage, so he's gonna use Submission to kill me, my Venusaur, but he'll take 20 damage and he'll die too. And so we'll both get a prize out of it, and then it's gonna be... Two to one prize advantage, and I just have to kill whoever he's got left. I'm mad. I mean, it's a good play. You almost understand me, but I'm still mad. Okay, that's fine. It doesn't fundamentally change what's going on. I'm just wondering if I want to do Scyther and damage now, or Gengar and damage in two turns. I'll do Gengar. I want to—I put him in the deck. I might as well <laughs> see him. Uh, now let me check. There's no damage floating around, and Gengar kills any of them, and so I'm good. Psychic energy. Next turn, psychic energy, and then we're done. Because he'll submission, and Gengar... 
He's doing whatever he can not to take himself out. But Gengar resists fighting, which is super handy in this case. And then... Psychic Energy. And from here, we're Gravy. Next turn, just to give a damage to. I'll give it to him only, so everything on his bench has 50 health left. Not for any reason, just feels right. And I'll draw a prize. I got Gust of Wind. And now it'll go one of two ways. He'll either stretch kick my bench and cool whatever, or he'll high jump kick me for 20. Nope. Stretch kick. And then he instantly dies, and that's game. Now beforehand, just because, like I said, it's my MO, I can put the double colorless on Scyther, so it's like he's ready to go, hypothetically, if something happened. And I know in my head I had a psychic to take out, you know, or to put on Dodrio so that all of my Pokemon were fully ready to go up and running. So, but that's game, and that's a fighting dungeon gone down. Mitch ain't got me. Yeah, Mitch. Exactly. Mitch. That's a reference to the Real Husbands of Hollywood, by the way. Very good. Here, take this. It's the fighting medal. Yeah, so, now that I have that medal, if I had the right cards, I could go to the machines in uh, Dr. Mason's lab and construct any of the decks I was up against. Usually, it's only the, the Master's decks that are really worth it, and even then... Ooh, Mr. Mime is great. So his whole thing is he only has 40 HP and he deals uh, 10 damage plus 10 more for each damage counter on the opponent. But if any attack, once weakness and resistance, all that is factored in, does 30 or more damage to him, it does nothing. So he can only take 10 or 20 damage increments. That's it. Which is super good. Oh, that was a good card to get. Nine tails. The Game Boy Nine Tails is cool because you flip eight coins. I, um, Arbok is. I mean, guaranteed poison is no joke. Don't misunderstand me. But three ma three energy for twenty guaranteed damage and then guaranteed poison. Hi, Game Dad. Game Dad. How you doing? You won the second medal? You must have been really lucky. I'll see how good you really are. Come on, let's do it. We'll play with six prizes. If you win, I'll give you a really rare card. I'm Ronald Dick. Ronald. This is why I didn't tell you we were ending off, because I knew Ronald was coming. Let's see what you got for me, Ronald. I wish I put Mr. Mime in this deck. Sure. This is gonna be a tough one. I don't like this. Let me go first. No or not. Whichever. I totally get it. Uh, at least Seal is weak. Ten damage hits. I got some time. And by some time, I mean I... I'm not in good shape. <laughs> Charmander and Cubone. Okay. I'm gonna play Coughing. I'm gonna play Bill. I would love two Grass Energy right now. Scyther. I'm gonna remove that energy on Seal. Just to slow him up, because he has multiple different kinds of Pokemon, so that's the thing. And with a Psychic, I could get... I'm gonna put the Psychic... This is gonna be kinda crazy, but... No, it won't benefit me. Dang. I'm gonna go ahead and put the Psychic on Ghastly, and see if I can... put this dude to sleep. Okay. 
Sleep is arguably the weakest. It's not even really arguably. It's just, it's the weakest of the status effects. Because it can go away right away. But if it works, it at least gives you some time if it does work. So it's like, it's worth the gamble. Here's the thing about Ronald Tech. He is just a lot of different types of cards. So... He has relatively good cards, so it's like, he probably will be able to get something. But because of it, he usually doesn't have the right energy to work with. So. Man, I am getting energy... Hacked right now. Oh, if I could just draw a couple energy, I would be in such good shape. Like if I could draw one of any energy, and then a double colorless, especially, that would be beautiful. I don't think I want to waste a defender right now. Like if I die, I die. I take it, but. That can't- I can't be wasting a defender to keep Ghastly alive, potentially, for one extra turn. Like... Nice. This is gonna be... Having such little energy- The good thing is I'm almost guaranteed to run into energy. The bad thing is he has Charmander. And Charmander doesn't play well with what I'm rocking. Two grass energy. That's all I'm asking for is two dose grass energies. It would make a world of difference. Gas is about to die, and then I gotta figure out who I'm gonna put out. This is going to be tough. And I may not beat it. And that makes me sad, because I want the promotional card. But, so what I'm, my best bet now, actually, is to put out, like, coughing. Okay, there's one grass energy. I'm going to put it on him. But what I'm going to do is I am going to... Swap it into Growlithe, who requires at least an energy just to retreat, and two to fight back. So it buys me the most potential time to get some energy and get online. Hey, he didn't even put it on Growlithe, so there you go. I got a shot. It's not a great shot, but it's a shot nonetheless. Okay, so that means he's going to try and actually hang on and fight with Growlithe. Which is frustrating. I can't even do anything. I can't even do anything. I don't have anything with which to do. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Ronald is getting whatever he wants. Um, I think my best bet, honestly, is going to be to... Ivysaur up, throw down a defender, and then gamble. I'll throw down Mewtwo, and then I'll put down Gambler. Okay. Woo! Show me some energy, man. Show me some ener- Give me some of that energy. Keep that same energy. Woo! I can work with that. 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 I can work with I can work with I can work with that. Uh uh. I can work with that. Uh uh uh. I can work with that. Okay. So now foul gas is gonna guarantee something. 
poison. That's fine, because next to... I... It... Poison, the sooner you get it on someone, the better. He won't be able to damage me back now. He'll probably retreat, because he has poison and can't damage me. Oh, he's not. He's just... And he... He's just letting the defender go away, I guess. Growlithe is just a sacrificial pawn for him. You've got to treat your cards with heart, man! You're not a real duelist! Uh... Mew Mewtwo, quite honestly, is going to be my next best dude after this. I gotta basically set up for a post Charmeleon world. Okay, this is actually perfect. If he does retreat, whatever. He's got a Growlithe that's about to kick it on the bench. If he does not retreat, Growlithe dies on the turn back. That's no bueno! I think my best bet now is to go straight to the Mewtwo. Mewtwo can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Charmeleon because of the nature of how Psychic works. He'll take a hit back, but, you know, life happens. But it's gonna be my best shot. But he'll deal 40 damage here because Psychic is 10 plus 10 more for every energy on the enemy Pokemon. He'll take 30, or if Homeboy decides to go real gutsy with it... Okay, yeah, I didn't know if he was going to flamethrower. I was going to say, he could hit me for 50, but... Just 30, and now I'll blow him away. And now I have Pokemon Trader. I could force another... Ivysaur, Venusaur situation to move energy around, but I need one more of the team. So, for now I'm just going to attack, and I'm going to keep it moving. I'll Pokemon Trader out if I need to. That's the thing, you don't want to necessarily go straight to, oh, this could work, because depending on how things work, like if Venusaur or, I, or my last Ivysaur are in the prizes, it's all going to be luck-based anyways. So you just got to kind of go for it. Uh, I do have Dodrio now, at least, which is honestly helpful. 10 damage, and then I turn around and smack him for 30. And then he'll kill... Ugh. I could get a... a Ghastly so that I can maneuver things around, but let me check. I'm gonna psych. Yeah. Mewtwo's gonna take one for the team here. And then when Cubo takes him out, I'll just turn around and uh, pop in coughing and let him finish the job. I would love two tails. I would love two tails. No. It's fine. Coughing can still do the job, it's just potentially more dangerous. So we go here, and then I go here. Grass energy. I gotta put that on Scyther, really. Drop Doduo because I can get out Dodrio even if just for the uh, the retreat aid. And Foul Gas. The best bet here would be Tails, actually. Yeah, because if he fails his flip, it may stop him from hitting me. But either way, if he fail, Oh, Heads would have been good because of the weakness. I would have guaranteed the kill. Get a Tails, get a Tails, get a Tails. Yeah! That's the best, when they kill themselves. Oh, never mind, he was trying to retreat. 
and he can't retreat, but he lost his energy, so he's done no matter what. Uh... Grass energy... I'm gonna evolve Dodrio, and I am gonna go ahead and put Bulbasaur on the bench. What am I- what am I- he retreats for free now, he retreats for free, already retreated for free, for free, and retreats free. So I can always retreat as long as Jodio's on the bench, just for free. So that's good to know. Um, so I'm gonna... I wanted to save it for a double colorless for Scyther. I'll put it on Nidoran just in case I need a Hail Mary for 30 damage. Uh, because, like I said, if I run into a double colorless, that's the the efficient way to do it. I might just pull this out, but it ain't gonna be easy. It's gonna revolve some some shell game action. Especially because he can tag me for... Uh, he's about to try me alien, isn't he? That's no bueno. That's gonna throw. That's gonna be the enemy, isn't it? I don't think I have an answer for Charmeleon anymore now that Mewtwo's dead. Charmeleon have seventy HP. 80 HP. Jesus. Um... But what I can do is Pokemon Trader that spare Nidoran for a Ghastly. Play Ghastly. Play a Psychic Energy on him. He has two left, so we're gonna horn hazard. Nothing. My god. This is not going well for me. Does he need two fire type energy to Oh he needs three period just to slash, let alone flamethrower. Oh, okay. I wish I realized that. Grass energy on... On Scyther. I gotta, I gotta go for it because he can deal guaranteed 30. This is gonna be a... A heck of a match here. Oh, come on! I do have Gust of Wind. I can gust out of this situation if I need to. And I can retreat for free. Potion's not gonna do anything for me. I'm still dying in one hit. But what I can do is... I can... Here's the... The ultimate goal here. It's the only way I win this, really. If I... Yeah, I use the Pokemon Power. Curse. I move one of Growlithe's on a Charmeleon. And I can only use it once per turn, right? Yeah. And now I need to get a heads here. Okay. If I can draw any energy, literally any energy in my deck, I attach it to Scyther, and then I can move one from Growlithe onto Charmeleon and he dies. And then Growlithe is also in one hit KO range, because he would be the next big issue, but I could also heal off the damage from Scyther 
20 of the 40 he would deal. Okay, we got a shot, we got a shot. So Psychic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slash, I'm gonna Pokemon Power. Move a damage from Growlithe onto him. Now he dies from a hit. And then left in his play area, he's got Growlithe, who will die in one hit, Cubone, who will die in one hit, and Seal will take two hits, but... Um... Yeah. So he'll throw Growlithe out in response and deal 40 damage to me, but then I can heal 20 of that. And then he's gotta deal 50 damage with subpar Pokémon. And that double colorless is helpful, because... It... I just, I need something to back up in case I need to run away real quick. Wait, I have Gust of Wind, don't I? Or did I, like, get rid of that? I still have Gust of Wind, right? So now I Potion. And then... Gust of Wind. Okay, yeah. So I'll kill him. And then... He'll probably send out... Hope... Seal. But I can Gust of Wind out a Cubone. I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna play this one out. I didn't attach the energy. Oi. I really hope that's not gonna bite me in the keister. Cubone. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. I have Switch, though. So, life could be worse. Double colorless on... I gotta go with the safe play, Dodrio. And leave the Psychic in my hand. He couldn't possibly get to correct energy on Growlithe, so I'm safe. For this exact moment. I'm gonna Slash. He'll hit me back for 10. The big thing is I just need to hope he doesn't put an energy on Growlithe. If he doesn't... This one's too close for comfort. Because... So... The problem is that I'm just gonna have to put out Dodrio. Because if I attack him and he does draw a fire energy and put it on Growlithe, he wins real quick. Like, he gets that sneak in win. So what I'm gonna have to do is put a... Grass on Dodrio. Retreat Scyther. Dodrio will hit for 10, I'll get tagged back for 10, and then I'll hit for 20 and kill Seal. Then, if he puts out Growlithe, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, thank God. He would have grabbed fire if I left Scyther out. Seal. Is he evolving? No. So I'm fine. I'm fine. So here we go. Okay, so here's how this plays out. Psychic on Gengar, because why not? So the way this finishes up is I rage and kill him. And then it doesn't matter what he throws out. If he throws out Kubone, perfect, but he won't because Dodrio's resistant. So he'll throw out Growlithe. And then I will Gust of Wind out a Cubone. I'll retreat into Scyther, and Scyther will claw out a victory for me. No pun intended. Right? They're weak to grass, right? Yeah. So. We'll do this Yu-Gi-Oh style. Ha! I play the magical Gust of Wind card, bringing out your Cubo. And then, I retreat to an old friend. You may remember him. Go! Scyther! Attack! With Slash Attack! And that's game. And this dude's on the other side. Ronald's like, Oh, no! How could you pull that game, Dad? I thought we were friends! The card isn't, like, especially good that I get. But I wanted it. Uh, it's uh, a Jigglypuff that has double edge and can also heal itself. It heals 20 damage to itself if it attacks for 40, but it can also heal itself. It's... it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but...
Okay, guys. So, we have two medals. I've beaten Ronald. We are actually doing not that bad. Uh, what I might do, I'm still trying to decide, because it's going to be the end of my recording session for today. What I might do is off-camera, I might go fight Imakuni a couple times to build up cards. But I don't know if everybody wants to see me struggle a bit, slash if they want to see the grinding or not. So feel free to shout out what you'd like. Um, but we'll see. Uh, otherwise, leave a like if you liked it, leave a dislike if you didn't. Maybe shout out your favorite moment from this episode, or from this series so far. Just... I would love to hear what you've seen as a standout where you're like, yeah, I, that was cool. Uh, and other than that, I'll catch you later, Game Dad fam. All right. <laughs>